black in your paintings to get your darks, or should you learn to mix your own darks from the colors on your palette? In this week's Art Studio Chat, we're gonna look at the pros and cons of both. G'day, I'm Rod Moore from Learn to Paint Academy, and in this week's episode of Art Studio Chat, I wanna to talk to you about the idea of mixing your own darks from the colors on your palette versus using black straight out of the tube as a dark. Now, the other day I was doing a live stream where we were looking at painting clouds, and we were looking at how do you paint the dark side or the shadow side, and I was mixing darks and I was making the point that you're better off to mix your own darks rather than use a black out of a tube. And of course that in inevitably led to comments, given it was a live chat, why don't you just use black? And so I wanna explore that here with you in this video. Now there's no right or wrong way, absolutes with anything. If you've been following me for a while though, you know, through the Learn to Paint Academy and the More Method of Painting, you'll know that it's all about simplifying things right down for beginners. So the less colors we have on our palette when we're starting out, the better. So what that means is I've simplified with the More Method of Painting down to three colors, basically our primary colors, our blue, our yellow, and our red. Now in our landscape palette, we use ultramarine blue, a alizarin crimson or a permanent crimson, right, which is a, a cool transparent red, and yellow ochre. And I've found that to be the best palette for landscape style painting if you're looking at just three colors on your palette. The introduction of black as a tube color on your palette adds another color to your palette. And for a lot of beginners, that can confuse things uh, because you're now not learning to mix your colors as strongly as you would with just three colors. And it's very easy to get muddy by dipping into that black when you think you want to darken something which doesn't necessarily give you the right results. So let's go down to the palette and we'll just have a bit of a look at the two different scenarios. One is mixing paint versus using black. Okay, so here on the palette, you can see I've squeezed out some black um, out of the tube and I've got my titanium white. This is a lamp black and I'm using uh, the Artisan water mixable oils, although the same principles will apply for acrylics as well. And then I've got my advanced palette here, but what I recommend for beginners is the French ultramarine blue, this darker blue here, a warmer dark blue, and then our permanent lizard and crimson and our yellow ochre. And to use those three to mix a dark. So let me grab a palette knife. Okay, so I'll, the, I'll just use this little squared off palette knife for the purpose of our demonstration. Now you can see this black, it's already a nice strong dark value. However, very little in nature is that value. So you're going to have to mix it with another color uh, to be able to use that in a landscape painting, right? So it's very, very rare that you would use black like that if you're trying to paint any sort of realism or impressionism. Now, post-impressionists like Shazam, they use black to outline things, uh, but they were moving away from realism and uh, moving more into abstraction. And, and uh, there's very few really good realism painters who would apply direct black like that into a painting. Um, not that I've seen anyway. But there's one version of dark, right? Now you could use that to darken colors on your palette. And we'll have a look at how that would work. Uh, and we'll put some up on a uh, canvas there for you to see. The way I recommend to mix a dark is to take your ultramarine blue, and I'll perhaps just pop that there. Okay, now that's already a dark value. If we were to convert this to a black and white shot, you would see straight away that that is a dark value, that ultramarine blue, okay? And if we now add uh, the alizarin crimson or permanent crimson to that, I'll pop that by a side there. When I mix those two together, what you'll find is that that's going to go really dark, okay? And so the immediate thing that you might assume is, well, there's a black right there, just mixing those two colors together. So we can minimize the number of colors we have on our palette just by mixing those two together. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky because a blue and a red make a purple. And um, if you know your color mixing, basic color mixing, uh, you'll know that the two primaries, blue and red, make a secondary color, which is purple, okay? That doesn't look purple there, but let's explore this a little further. We start to break that value down with white. So I'll just take a little bit of white and let's just break down um, our black here. Okay. And what we'll end up with the black is a lighter version, a grayed version of that. 
Okay, which you can see there, depending on how much white you add. And that makes sense, right? That's what you'd expect. We'll, we'll, uh, in another Art Studio chat, we'll do um, an example of, color, uh, of value scales using just black and white. So there you go. Black plus white gives you a nice gray, and we can have different shades of gray between black and white, depending on how we mix it. Okay. But what about our dark that we've mixed off our palette? If I add white to that, what's going to happen? Now, this is a bit of a trap for uh, inexperienced players here, right? Because when I mix those two together, we get lavender, or you know, a light purple. Because blue and red make purple, right? And then you can see it there. It's just that when, you, when there's no white in that mix, it looks on the palette to be very dark, okay? But in reality, it's a mauve or a purple, depending on how much white you add to it. Secondary color, okay? Now, so how do we avoid that? How do we mix our own dark where we don't have that problem? That's the question, to get a similar sort of result to here. So the way to mix a dark is to use the same formula. We'll take our blue and we'll take our red, okay? A little bit more of the red. And to that, we add our third primary, which is our yellow ochre. So I'm going to add that much yellow ochre to those two. And then what's going to happen is one of those colours is going to dominate, depending on how much I put in of each. Okay. And you can see there, it's gone a little to the green side. It's a dark, murky colour. It's a little to the green side. Okay. So if the secondary colour goes it is green, then you've got to think, okay, what's the third primary? So blue and yellow make a green. The third primary is the red. If we add more red to that mix now, okay, you can see it's now dominating as the red. Okay. So now it's a little bit on the red side. How do we overcome that problem? We add just a touch blue. Okay. And you can see you've got nice brown earthy tones there, so you never need to buy a brown. Okay, add a little bit more of the blue to it. And we're not quite at black, and it's difficult to mix black um, using the three primaries, I've found. There may be a combination of primaries, for instance, cad yellow, cad red, and say cobalt blue may give you a better or a more accurate uh, mix that you can get closer to black. However, as I've said, it's very rare that you need black on you're painting, you know, it's very rare in landscape painting or seascape painting. If I take a little touch of the white in here now, and I mix that back, what you'll see is an effect that's closer linked to the black breaking down, okay, rather than our first mix of dark. Just going to get that ratio right. Now, this is a really good exercise to do. I, I highly recommend that you don't just watch this, that you actually get your colours out and do exactly what I'm doing here, right? Um, because now what we've got there is a grey, and that's what that is, it's a grey. But this grey is a little bit warmer than that one there. So it's gone, it's just slightly bluey, coolish, whereas this is slightly warmish, okay? But here's the advantage of mixing your own paint. When you understand the ratio of the three primary colours, I can now push this dark, or even the darker version of it, okay? I can push that cooler if I want, I'll add more blue. And that will then give me a cooler version of that dark. Okay, see that there? That's a much cooler version than the first version we mixed. If I wanted to make it warmer, I could take the red and pop more red into it. And then I get a warmer version. Now I've dominated it too much with the red there. Okay, but you get the point. There's a, that's still very much a dark value and it's warmer. So now I can push the dark cooler or warmer. And then as I break those down, okay, if I add a little bit of white into that there, then I can get cool greys, like that one there. That's a bluey cool grey. Okay. Or I could add a little bit of white to the warmer side and I can get a lighter warm grey. Okay. So the you get a far greater degree of flexibility. This is more of a neutral. This is a cooler grey, 
that's a warmer ground. I can push it, I can even push it to the yellow side if I wanted to, um, to give me even more variety with our color mixing. Now, the question then becomes, well, can't I just add red to this dark here or to warm it or um, add the blue to cool it, right? So let's just get a little bit of black there. Let's just try. Um, if I add a little bit of blue to that, will I get a similar effect to that one in there? Let's just try that. And I don't know that it's going to be quite the same. That dark is, is dominating the blue. If I add a little bit of white to that. See that? That's definitely altered it. But it's still a far more neutral grey. Um, with a good amount of blue in there. It's a more neutral grey than this one here, which is our definitely cooler grey. Now you can see that it's this is cooler than the previous mix where there was no other added colours. Um, it's definitely cooler, but it's just not as cool as the uh, the one we've mixed up ourselves. I could keep adding blue to that mix, of course. So you can see there that I can eventually get there. But my point is, why would you add another colour uh, to your palette and just confuse the process of mixing when you're sort of in that beginner to intermediate phase, um, getting some more paper towel here, um, and you know the best thing you can do in that phase is learn how to mix your paints properly. Okay, so I'm going to go up to the uh, camera on the canvas here. Okay, so there's my canvas. Dip my brush into a bit of thinner. Let's just play around with this a little bit more. So this is our pure black here. Okay. And again, you pretty rarely see pure black like that in a painting, I think. Um, maybe, you know, maybe some landscapes do have really dark blacks like that. Um, and there's our neutral grey with just white added to it. Now, I do think that there are times when you do, where it's an advantage to use the black. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying I think you're better off to learn to mix. That's our cooler version after adding two lots of blue to it. Okay. As opposed to... Uh, where are we? This one here's got our three primaries in it. I've lost, lost it a little bit. I've let it go a bit murky. But there it is there. Just picked up a little bit of white, so it's lightened it off a little and made it a bit milky. And then if we take the cool version of that, see it's a nice cool blue, bluey grey. And you've got to ask yourself, well, when would you use a, a cool bluey grey? Well, you would use that if you're creating painting landscapes or seascapes to... Um, represent distance, you know, atmospheric perspective. So this is with mixing. Now I haven't got a very good example of the mixings because I, I used it all up. So let me just get a little bit more yellow ochre. Okay? Come back down to our palette. Cam, there we go. So this is our dark mix here. I'll add that yellow into it. So again, we're not going to get to black with the combination of colours that I've got. Although if I push it a little bit blue up, a little bit more blue and a little bit more red, which are darker values than that yellow, we can get close. Okay, that's close. It's just not the same. Let me just take a swipe of that and we'll pop it up on the canvas here. So this is what it should have been without that pulling paint off. Grab some of that on the brush. Okay, so that's how it should have looked like that. So you can see there's a definite difference between them. However, they're you know, close enough in value um, but I think the cooler and warmer interpretations of them are better, in my opinion. Now, let me just take 
a little touch of the white into there, and a little touch of the red in there. And part of the reason is, when we push the mixed version, cooler or warmer, we're using colors that are already in the mix, all right? Um, therefore, it's, the colors work better together. So this color here, when we mixed up that dark, it, it was consisting of blue, yellow, and red, right? So when we push it a little bit redder, the red's already in harmony with the color mix we already have. If we push it a bit bluer, it's already in harmony. Whereas black isn't necessarily made up of the blue, yellow, and red. So therefore, we're introducing whatever color, you know, however they make the black, and then we add red, we're add, adding in another color that doesn't have any harmony there. If I lighten that off, just see how close it gets to that one there. Okay, you can see as I lighten it, it's going back more to a neutral cool grey. It's losing that warmth. So I'll come back in with a bit more. We're going to a whole lot of lizard this time, which will then in turn darken it because it's a darker value, which means we'll then need to add more white. So we're going to struggle to get to that lighter value like that, that light warm value. Take more white into it. And you can see it's just not as vibrant. It's far more neutral because of the fact we're mixing that red in with the black. Okay, it's almost the same value there now. It's probably still just a touch darker, but if we put up a comparison, you can see it's a lot more, a lot deader. And that's because we're mixing that red into the black rather than putting it into a mix that already had the red in it. Okay, so there it is there. You can see it's a lot darker and it's gone you know, more muddy, neutral sort of tone than that one there. And that's because the original dark already had red in it. When we mix that dark with red, we got a, a more vibrant red, warmer red. When we, whereas when we mix that red into black, okay, which didn't have red in it already necessarily it turned out a bit flat and a bit muddy so i think that's a worthwhile exercise to do play around with your colors right get a tube of black and try mixing it with blue and, and red and white and seeing if you can get a vibrant you know cool gray and a vibrant warm gray by mixing them in that way and then play around with making up your own dark with blue yellow and red and doing the same exercise and uh, just pop it down on the canvas and make little notes so you know which is which. Now there are times when we will use black and white and uh, you know, especially when we're doing value studies and things like that. So I'm not saying don't have black, I'm just saying you're probably better off in most cases with landscapes and seascape paintings. You know, if you're trying to create realism or impressionist sort of paintings, you're better off mixing your own darks. And along the way to mixing them, you'll learn how to mix up um, browns and you know different types of greys, and you'll get much more variety in your color mixes when you learn how to mix them yourself. So my preference, and what I've been telling all my students, is learn to mix your own colors. Now, if you don't know how to do it, go and check out our color mixing course at the Learn to Paint Academy. Um, if you do know how to do it, then just get into the habit of whenever you need a dark, mix up your own darks with your three primary colors. Get really good at understanding the properties of your primary colors and how you can push them cooler or warmer, darker to lighter. And the better you get at that, the more intuitive your painting will become. And then you won't need to reach for a tube to solve your problems. Because then what happens is you then, once you start relying on a color like black to solve your darks, if you think that is a, a solution, You'll then walk into the art supplies store and you'll see olive green and you think, okay, what's a shade of green that I don't have to mix now, right? And you end up with 45 colors on your palette before you know it. So don't do that, right? Learn to mix your basic palette colors, your three primaries, and it'll make you such a better painter, trust me, that you'll, um, you'll start to paint intuitively and you won't have to think about it after you've got those skills under your belt and it'll just make you a better painter.